Hey, welcome to Discard. Today I'm going to talk about a game controller stand for the NES or Super Nintendo that I made in the style of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Let's take a look. So a friend of mine, Russ Lyman, likes to make some custom NES game controllers in the style of many different NES games. And I also found out that Russ was going to be working on a Ninja Turtle style controller for the NES as well. And recently I started using a 3D printer and I kind of wanted to mix 3D printing with some of the arts background that I have and turn it into a custom controller stand for that Ninja Turtles controller. So before checking out anything in this video, go and check out Russ Lyman's page. He has an entire video dedicated to how he made this controller and painted it and made it super awesome and it's definitely well worth going and checking out to see where this project started. So the first thing I needed for this project was a good base for the controller stand and it was going to be the controller stand itself. I was going to either need to 3D model a stand from the ground up or find something that was pre-existing maybe on Thingiverse a great place to find all sorts of 3D files for 3D printing. I found an awesome user there called the Telltale Atheist and he has amazing designs for a wide range of different controller stands. So if you do have a 3D printer, definitely search him out because he has a ton of different stands on there that are available for you to print out. One of the first things I think of when I think about the Ninja Turtles, I think about manholes and sewer covers and pizza and ooze and I kind of wanted to take all of those things and collaborate them into this project. So the first thing I did was take that original base for the stand and take another file that I found for a manhole cover that just so happened to have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles written across the top and then have that kind of fit into the stand itself. So I used that and kind of cut out of the stand so that it would fit perfectly attached to it. I did actually several test prints with this. I was making the words red and with whatever colors I had at the time and I eventually upgraded to green and found that online and found that it popped super nicely. Now another thing that was going through my mind when I was doing this was I didn't want to just kind of conglomerate a bunch of things onto the base of this and have it have no tie-in together. So I wanted to add a little city to the background to kind of add to that Ninja Turtles vibe. And I found this smaller city on Thingiverse as well and I, I resized it and cut it so that it would all kind of fit into the base like little puzzle pieces. And one of the last pieces to this puzzle was going to be pizza. So I wanted to find some pizza files out there that I could kind of alter and add bites to and kind of resize so I could attach them to certain points on this. I never really knew where I was going to attach them to until the very last minute and I'm kind of happy with where they ended up being. Most of the things that I print are going to be printed in all of one color and then I have to paint them afterwards. So the city itself was painted in all black and then I took a silvery gray paint and kind of did a wash over the top of that to just kind of give it a basic background look but also maintain some of that black in the windows and give it a little bit of pop to it. Because when you print it all in one color, you don't really get those darks and lights in there and it doesn't end up looking like a real city. And when it comes to the pizza itself, it actually was printed in a gray. So I had to hand paint it. I took all these little different colors and painted all the pepperonis and the crust and the little toppings that are on there to make it look as much like a pizza as I possibly could. When it comes to the manhole cover, that got printed in two different colors which means I had to print the manhole and be there at the exact moment that it started to print the letters for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and stop the printer, change out the filament to a new color, and then start printing again. That way it's all one piece and I have the nice green piece over the gray background and it looks awesome. But on top of that, I took a basic wash of some browns and blacks and reds and used that to kind of muck up the, the manhole cover. One of my favorite things to do is these washes and kind of dirtying of old items to make them look a little bit older. Um, it did an okay job. It's not perfect by any means and you can certainly still see that it's 3D printed but I think it adds a nice little effect to that manhole cover. Now once I had all these parts and pieces, I started piecing them together and super gluing them in place so that they would not be moving anymore. You have to kind of make sure that the wires that you're going to be wrapping in the back are going to fit properly, so I had to cut some of those pieces and print them again so that that wire would fit back there when I put the NES or a Super Nintendo controller onto this stand in the future. So after getting all those parts and pieces glued in together, I still wasn't so sure about how this was looking. It was kind of still broken apart regardless of the buildings that I'd added in there to kind of add a theme throughout the entire stand itself it just didn't seem to kind of tie together plus 
I was loving this project so much I wanted to keep working on it. And that's kind of a danger of doing DIY is getting in there and kind of muddying up the waters because you just want to keep doing it. So I came to the conclusion that I wanted to get ooze from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and then add that in there kind of between the buildings and kind of pouring out the front like it was gooing between all of the buildings and the items and all of this stuff, kind of tying it all together with this green ooze. But I talked to Russ and he had an idea that there was possibly some hot glue out there that was actually the color of green. So I went on Amazon and found out that there was a green hot glue and I could use Use that instead of doing what I had been doing before. And what I had to do with the hot glue was start at the very bottom of the item and start working my way up. I'd add big globs of it and let it dry. I had a fan going on it to make sure that it would dry faster. That way it wouldn't affect the plastic as much when it was going. And to cap everything off, I wanted to add a nice green base to the bottom of this, just to kind of cap everything off and make it so the hot glue wasn't touching any surfaces or able to be broken off. And it would just make it an overall solid product. And to do that, what I had to do was take a pencil and do a outline around the base of the item and then take a picture of that bring it into my 3D modeling program, do a line around that, and fill it to make this nice little base for the product, and of course 3D print it out. I really liked that I added that base to the bottom, and it really brought everything together. It matches with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles logo on there, and really is awesome. So one of the things I talked about earlier was muddying the waters by continuing to work on a project and really overwork it in that way. So I decided to kind of take an outside the box idea and create a box for it. So essentially what I did was make kind of a retail box and now I've never really made a box before and there's an entire art to box making out there and I didn't really follow anybody's rules. I essentially took different photos and brought them into Photoshop and kind of worked them together and found a Ninja Turtles font so that I could write certain things on there to make the box seem like it would be sold at retail. I tried to include some cool things like little call outs by the Ninja Turtles or uh, different images of the actual product that would be inside. And of course, I wanted to add some clear windows to these boxes, but the box itself is actually made out of printouts that I printed from my own printer. And then I would take that kind of shiny paper and then paste it onto some better cardstock so it'd have a little bit of more heft to my box. But I really loved this project because adding little things to those the box was just a lot of fun and kind of finding a different way to market your own thing is just awesome. Some of the things I wrote on there was, wrap up that cord, dude. Grab a pizza and know your controller is safe. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game controller stand features a gnarly cityscape, realistic ooze, tasty pizza, and manhole cover. To cap it all off, it actually holds a controller from your Super Nintendo or NES. Game systems and controllers sold separately. I added a lot of images to this, but I like to add a couple images of the actual games on the back to really sell it and make it so people are interested in it. But overall, the box was just kind of the fun part of this. I just wanted to keep on making this and having a lot of fun. So I made that box as a place to store it, but more as just another way to continue to work on the project. I guess the only thing that I didn't really account for in the box was some foam padding for the actual item. At this point, I can only put the controller stand as well as a controller into the box and it kind of just sits there, but I would have liked to have made a custom piece of foam to kind of sink down into there like a real retail box and really sell that image of it being a retail item. But yeah, that was a, that was definitely a fun project. So when it was all said and done, I was really happy with the way this came out. I love that it's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles completely styled display stand for an awesome controller by Russ Lyman. It really marries with that really nice. They look fantastic together. This has a nice effect in, in my game room. I love looking at it. I've had it here for quite some time trying to make this video, but because of some delays, it's taken some time. So I guess if there's any kind of message to go with this video is that if you wanna make your own display stand, you can absolutely do that. If you have a 3D printer, it's even easier to make your own custom display stand and add your own kind of creativity to it and just make an overly awesome thing for your game room. But thanks for coming and checking out Discard today. If you have any other ideas for displaying things in a game room or game collection, please leave them in the comments below. I am always looking for more ideas. If you want to help out Discard past the subscription, please check out patreon.com slash discard and check out all the awesome stuff you can get for $2 a month. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. But otherwise, have a great day and collect what you love. And one more thing to add, I'm actually sending back Russ Lyman's controller back over to him 
So I was thinking my stand was going to be pretty lonely without that awesome Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle controller sitting in it. And I decided to kind of look out there in the community to find somebody who was also making controllers. I found a guy called Rourke uh, out of Rourke's Retro Corner on Twitter. He's actually gone the extra mile of taking these old retro products and then making an awesome cast for them and then taking a resin and then pouring it into it and making a shell from that. So he's been making Game Boy shells and NES controller shells and just some really awesome stuff out of all the colors under the rainbow as well as adding different elements into the resin as it's drying. It's just really cool to see this process of making something for the retro gaming community that you don't really see every day. And these are completely custom game controllers made from the ground up by this guy and I absolutely love that. So I hope you guys all have a fantastic day today and collect what you love. Education. I don't really have an explanation.